Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and today I'm going to give you a beginner's guide to Punnett squares. There are a few mistakes that students always make when they're doing Punnett squares, so I, I hope to kind of clear those up. Now, the Punnett square is often overused as just a quick way to solve genetics problems without really understanding what's going on with the genetics. And so I want to kind of get to that root. And if you could remember one thing from this whole video podcast, it's this right here. The two sides of a Punnett square represent the alternatives after meiosis. In other words, you have a bunch of genes and you give half of those genes to a sperm or an egg and and that happens through meiosis and so the organization of those gametes this case is just a monohybrid cross are going to be on either side of this just like a flip of the coin this would be for one parent and then this would be the other parent on the other side and so what are the boxes on a punnett square stand for they simply stand for all the alternatives that could occur if we had mating between each of these different gametes. And so let's get to some examples and hopefully that'll help. So we're gonna start with a monohybrid cross. A monohybrid cross is simply a cross that is looking at one trait. And so let's do one that's really, really simple. And so let's say we're crossing purple flowers that are homozygous purple with those that are homozygous white flowers. In other words, this is the dominant trait, this is the recessive trait. And so if you look at the parents, what you wanna do first of all is figure out what are the possible gametes that could be produced in meiosis. In other words, this one could either give a big P or it could give a big P. What does that mean? It can only give one thing. It can only give a big P or that dominant allele. And so if you're doing a, a, a problem like this, you don't even need a big Punnett square. One parent can only contribute big P. So let's look at the other parent. The other parent can either give a little P, and I try to make them really small, or a little P because P's look the same. And so the other parent can only give a little P. And so we could put that on the other side. And so what are the opportunities that we could have as far as fertilization goes? Well, this one's automatically going to give a big P. The other one's going to give a little P. And so this is the only possible outcome we could get between a cross of a homozygous dominant and a homozygous recessive. And so you don't really need a big Punnett square. Now you could do that. You could fill it in, big P over here, little P over here. But if you do that, you're going to get the same thing in all of the boxes. And so it's still a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. In other words, 100% of the time you're going to have that. Okay, so let's get to one that's a little more complicated. Let's say we have a heterozygous cross. And so this is for um, purple flowers as well. Well, if you look at this one, now the problem's changed a little bit. This one could give a big P, but it also could give a little P. And so we have to show both of those possible gametes of meiosis. And so this would be the big P, and then this would be the little P over here. So half of the time it's going to give the big P, half of the time it's going to give the little P. If we look at the other parent, same thing, it's going to give the big P half of the time, and it's going to give the little P half of the time as well. So we're going to put that here. Now we simply fill in the boxes, and so this would be a big P with a big P, because I'm taking this here and that there. This is going to go over to here to give us a big P and a little P. By convention, we usually write the dominant allele first, so that would be one alternative here. Here would be a big P, little p as well. So we get the big P here and the little p here. And then finally, we're going to get little p over here and a little p over here, since they're each contributing a little p. And so what do we get from this cross? Well, we get a 1 to 2, since these are exactly the same, to 1 genotypic ratio, because the genotype is the letter. So there's one that's like this, there's two that look like this, and there's one that looks like that. So that's going to be our 1 to 2 to 1 genotypic ratio. What about phenotypic? Well, this one's going to be a purple flower, and so are these other two. And so if we're looking at the phenotypic ratio, the phenotypic ratio now is going to be a 3 to 1 ratio. We're going to have 3 purple to every 1 white that we have. 